Hello and welcome aboard the Nitty Stew podcast. My name is Leanne. I am the Nitty Stew. Stew is short for stewardess. I am a Canadian flight attendant and a knitter, yarn enthusiast, and this is my YouTube channel where I bring you on the road with me and we often check out local yarn shops and I get to tell you a little bit about the history and little bits of footage from the overnight cities in addition to the yarning content. So thank you for being here if you're new to my channel and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much Fiber Friends for keeping me company. I absolutely love the community that's growing up here and thank you so much for continuing to come back. I hope you maybe have a tea or a cool beverage beverage of choice. Uh, I'm having a Bengal spice tea today. It's getting close to sunset here in the city I'm in. I'm actually in a town today. I am coming to you live from Comox, British Columbia. This is the traditional and unceded territory of the Comox people and I respectfully acknowledge the traditional keepers of this land and I think it's kind of neat how it's actually the Comox people and I'm in Comox. The sad part is it's not spelt the same way as <clears throat> the Indigenous Native people spell Comox, but um, that's where I am today. So thank you for joining me. Um, yeah, today has been amazing. It's about the perfect February day here. Uh, Comox is located on the Upper East Side of Vancouver Island, and today it's eight degrees Celsius, which is 46 degrees Fahrenheit and I got to go visit Cumberland, which is part of the Comox Valley, and that's what I got to visit today. So, glad you're here. Uh, the nitty content today, we have quite a bit. I have three finished objects, two works in progress, a few items that I wanted to show you that I cannot wait to cast on, and um, also, if you stick around to the end, I might have had a busting my balls relapse, or I'll let you decide. <laughs> if indeed what uh, what went down there. But uh, yeah, without any uh, further chit chat, uh, I'd like to tell you about my finished object. First of all, the one I'm wearing. Uh, this here is my Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry, The Weekender it's called. And it's for the bougie sweatshirt knit along hosted by Casey of Young Folk Knits. And I've made The Weekender before but I'd never made it with the intended yarn uh, that Andrea Maori had designed it with, which is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is a lofty, wonderful, light as air. I love, love this wool. And it's also very hot, like I'm cooking here. <laughs> um, this pullover I had made before in Briggs and Little, which is a Canadian yarn, but I didn't make the sleeves. I turned it into a sleeveless version and used it as a vest. But this time I wanted to do the full meal deal and, and actually finish the arms. My concern about knitting this was the last time my armhole depth was a little bit too snug. And this time I took precautions to make sure that didn't happen. Um, before I actually, it's, it's knit from the bottom up and Andrea Maori is genius because, oh, sorry about the sun sunbeam here. Uh, it's reverse stocking net, but she has you uh, knit it so that it's all stocking net and then you flip it inside out so that the reverse stocking net shows and you get this lovely slip stitch detail on the front and back. I'll insert footage of me wearing it so, um, so I don't have to stand up in this sunbeam here. I couldn't get gauge um, with the needle size recommended. I, I ended up not worrying about gauge and I did some knitting math. Uh, Thanks to Selma of Little Big Knits, uh, she had done an episode way, way back, I think it's episode 12, where she talks about knitting math and adjusting your pattern to the gauge that you get. And I really like that. And the way she explained it, like a light bulb went on. And yeah, so I think from now on, if whatever needle size I'm using, and if I'm liking the fabric that it's creating, I will use her tips on uh, picking the size appropriately. And what it melts down to, I don't think I'll explain it quite as good as she would, so I encourage you. I'll link her that episode below. But she essentially is, you figure out what your stitches per inch are, as you would in a gauge swatch, and then multiply that by your chest circumference, and then pick 
where a pattern like say a top down or anything that has the when you pick up all the stitches for around the middle the one that would be closest to the stitch count per inch again i probably didn't explain that very well but uh that is that's a game changer for me i think uh especially yeah, as I go forward and sometimes I'm like, well, that's the needle size it says and I'm getting gauged, but I don't really like the fabric that it's creating. To be able to make that adjustment is, I think that's a boss move. So um, I did that with this sweater. I did a, you know, about six inches in and I realized it was way, way too big. So I did that calculation and I chose to go down to a size one. And I'm very happy with the end result. So finished object number one. The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. If you haven't made it, and a lot of people have, uh, it's a great, it's a great sweatshirt and it's bougie. My next finished object. Oh, I might have to move out of this sunbeam here. <laughs> uh, this here is the Melancholy hat, which is designed by Camilla Holler Adamson, also known as Cami Jo Knit, who is a Danish knitwear designer and yarn dyer. Ah. <sighs> I showed you the yarn that uh, Camilla sent out a couple of us pod pals. Uh, Cami Jo Knit also has a podcast. Check it out, she's delightful. And she sent it all the way to me to try the pattern. I made the midi medium and large size. It's a classic rib toque. And in this, this is Tennessee Warbler. So you use, you use one mohair and two strands of a fingering to make this hat. I think it's got perfect slouch. I wore it all over uh, Fernie, where I got to go out to a mountain getaway with my knitting friend, Tracy from Oliver Rain Knits. She hosted my sister and I, and I wore this all over town and felt very uh, in, in place. I also can flip this up and have the brim. It's very comfy, very cozy. Um, as far as mohair goes, I've never knit with anything this soft before. 72% fine kid mohair and 28% silk. It does not itch my head at all, even when I'm warm. And the sparkles, I mean, I've got the sun shining right at me. I wonder if you can see the sparkles. Thank you so much, uh, Camilla, for letting me test your hat and for letting me try your incredible yarn. Mm. My third finished object, I did a pair of socks. They are made in Let Lopi, so they were a very quick knit. Um, this is a test knit for Nina of A Crafter's Tale podcast. They're called the Ada Socks, which she named after her, um, while well, she was almost ready to give birth to her new, new baby girl. She was not sleeping well, as sometimes that happens. <laughs> and she just jot jotted down this color work uh, motif, which I think is just beautiful. And what it is, is you use Let Lopi, and the colorway I chose was 1463, which I had in stash, this natural one. And then this is the black Let Lopi. You need very little. I used um, two two balls of the natural colorway and just like itty bitty scraps. I think I wrote down like, yeah, 25 grams of the black. And you hold mohair with it to give it strength. So I only held the mohair for the cuff and for this part of the, um, the sock. I didn't hold it for the black at all. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's, I just think this, these are great house socks. They're quite thick, very warm. And the one thing I will say is the pattern itself, like many um, Scandinavian or maybe just European designers, uh, she doesn't hold your hand through it. You, I wouldn't recommend it as maybe a first sock pattern for anybody, but it's, you know, it's, it's fairly straightforward with the slip stitch heel and a gusset. And again, it goes, goes together really, really quick. And I quite love it. I think the release date will be when she makes a few adjustments to some of the translations between English and uh, she's from Southern Sweden. And so there was a few English um, edits for just typos and such and some numbers that she was gonna fix. 
and I think this pattern called the Otta Socks will be out probably at the end of February, so the end of this month. So watch for that. Okay, before I get into my two works in progress, I think I'll insert the footage from my day here in Cumberland. When my February schedule was released, I was so excited to see that I had a 17 and a half hour layover in Comox. I immediately reached out to my friend Christine, who is a former Calgarian, but now has relocated to the Comox Valley and lives in Cumberland, where she started up her yarn shop online called Woolen Waves. She came and picked me up from the hotel. Uh, it was so good to see her in person. It's been a while, it's been a couple years now that she moved. And she gave me the local tour of Cumberland. So Cumberland itself is one of the three C's of the Comox Valley. There is the city of Courtney, the town of Comox, which is where the airport is, and is also known for one of the largest Air Force bases in the country and the village of Cumberland. In Cumberland, you'll find heritage buildings and the remains of what once was one of the largest Chinatowns in North America. Cumberland remained an active coal mining town until 1966, despite enduring devastating mine explosions, destructive fires, two world wars, and bitter labor disputes. While Cumberland itself only has a population of 4,447 residents, according to a 2021 census, the Comox Valley as a whole has about 72,000 people. The average age is 50.8 years. The Comox Valley is known as Vancouver Island's adventure and culinary destination. There's incredible fishing, so many mountain bike trails, um, so much to do, and the name Comox is actually derived from the Indian word Komakthe, meaning land of plenty. After the walk along Main Street, Christine took me over to the Woolen Waves headquarters where I was met by mascots Gigi and Benjamin. So it's not always the case when it comes to someone who owns a yarn shop, but Christine is a knitter first and loves all things yarn and wool and patterns. And it's not just about the business. She loves this stuff as much as any obsessed knitter. And she brings in such beautiful yarns. She prides herself on bringing in Canadian yarns, indie dyed yarns as much as possible. And she has a fabulous selection of Wool Dreamers products, the organic yarn out of Spain. I'll let her tell you herself what she does and why. The reason I have these yarns in my store is because I either know the dyers or I can relate to their story um, and I have a connection with, with them. So that's, that's why you find these yarns in the store. Big thank you to you, Christine, for picking me up and being my tour guide today and for giving me a one-on-one -on -one tour of your awesome yarn shop. According to Google, there are two other yarn shops in the area, in the Comox Valley Village Yarn Shop in downtown Comox and Uptown Yarns in Courtney. I have known Christine for a while and she just has an eye. So I honestly strongly recommend you follow her on Instagram and sign up for her newsletter because she picks out the coolest things and uh, I just, I find so much inspiration. Uh, you made the town cooler moving in there, Christine. Thank you so much again. Back to the knitting content. I have two works in progress to share. This is this one and only sock I've completed so far <laughs> of the Wintry Wood Socks by Nancy Wheeler. I did a test knit for Nancy Wheeler. Um, I'm not traditionally known as a, a sock knitter. I've made socks, but uh, when I saw the texture of these beautiful socks, and then it has that lovely um, float stitch pattern going up the back, I jumped on it. I absolutely did. And I, I knit the size uh, medium, so the uh, 64 stitch. And my, my foot is actually a little bit smaller than that, so I should have gone for the small. But uh, anyway, they do fit me, but they I will definitely make the second one. I uh, love the way that Nancy did this pattern. She has ruined me now for all sock test knitting because it was so well written. And she had video um, tutorials for every step of the way. Uh, it is knit from the toe up. And I love how she had us do a specific measurement till we started to do the turning for the heel. 
and it is a slip stitch and every single technique um, from the cast on to how to catch the float in the stitch pattern was was shown on her uh, YouTube links which she had in her pattern. If you haven't watched um, Nancy's YouTube channel I suggest it. She's called Knit Sip Happy. She does beautiful knitting and yeah she's a designer extraordinaire. She recently announced that she has a pattern going into the 52 weeks of socks. So congrats to Nancy on that and I'm grateful to be part of maybe her test knitter um, people now, I would definitely uh, test knit for her again. Big fan, uh, and I use stash yarn for it, which was in my stash since 2017. <laughs> so that's my work in progress. I will cast on that, but I have an ongoing quest to knit a hat for my son. Uh, I'm calling this the fourth time is the charm. <laughs> So my son runs really hot and he keeps stretching out his wool hats. And so he stretched out his, um, his recent ribbed hat that I made for him. And he asked if I could uh, tighten it up a little. And I said, well, I could probably felt it a little. And I accidentally felted it a lot. And this, this happened. <laughs> So once it felted too much and I realized that, I, I felted it enough to make a bowl. Apparently I make bowls now. I felt bowls. <laughs> uh, who knew that Malabrigo would felt this easily? But it did. Anyway, I love the color of it. And it would be a good yarn bowl to host the new yarn, which is actually more rustic. I thought I'd just just go for something a little bit more wooly. And he's, I mean, it's a lot more rustic than uh, the Malabrigo. It's 100% Highland wool that I hand dyed. And it is worsted. So um, we're trying a, a US six, so a four millimeter needle. I'm making my trusted and true on the C-Train hat. But instead of 96 stitches, uh, which I did last time, I'm going to 88 stitches. Thoughts and prayers, okay? The fact that he uh, wore his other hat so much that his head warmed it and it stretched, <laughs> thats I think that's pretty cool. But I'm like, okay, hopefully this one is, is the magic. Um, please let me know in the comments what you are knitting on. What's, uh, what's on your needles? Are you like me and you have like total need to cast on everything or want to cast on everything? Oh, um, that's where I'm at right now. I have an imminent cast on that I cannot wait. This here is next up. This is the Always Vest by Anna Daku, also known as the uh, Bluebird Box on YouTube and Ravelry. And she is the designer behind this beautiful vest. And I have been smelling and holding on to this Canadian unspun yarn. Look at the size of this plate. I think I've showed this to you before. Um, gosh, that smells good. This is from uh, Crux, Crux Fibers, which she got from the Coslin Mills. Uh, it is pre-yarn. It is virgin wool. There is 400 yards on this approximately. Um, and I'm, I'm feeling like I could definitely get this cropped vest um, if I hold two together. I hopefully can get gauge on it. Uh, it's bottom up and I'm going to knit size three and I cannot wait. So I gotta finish Derek's, my son's hat <laughs> and then I will cast on for this vest. I can picture it underneath a really cool maybe plaid shirt and then have this like the collar popping out. Mm. So that's next up. Believe it or not, I finally got my hands on the knitted Kalevala. Uh, this isn't the one that my son ordered me for Christmas. That never did show up. Sadly, I, I don't know where it is. It's out there somewhere. Um, it was sent to the wrong address, but marked as delivered. So whoever kept it, or if it's somewhere in Canada Post Depot somewhere, <laughs> may it be well. But uh, my son went on and reordered this from Art of Yarn, Kelowna. And it is ugh, stunning. I, <laughs> I want to knit all the way through this. Like 100%, every pattern is just 
like gobsmacking beautiful. Look at that. So all of the designs are inspired by a character um, in the epic Finnish poem called the Kalevala. Kalevala. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I just try and say it really fast and then it seems right. <laughs> a lot of them are made with let low be, but um, I'm gonna look in my stash. And I really think it's so interesting how they, a lot of them have this um, color work at the bottom of it. Mostly I wanna make the pullovers and I might have to try a technique that I've been looking up on YouTube. Look at that. Um, called ladder back, stranded ladder back. And it's a technique where you essentially make a second fabric behind the color work so it doesn't show through. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that or if I should just do my regular color work, but some of the floats I think might be quite long. I'm more, more than comfortable doing floats that are around like five, six st uh, stitches, but after that, I don't know. Um, especially if I do like a light color and then a dark stranded behind it. It'd be nice if that didn't uh, didn't show through. So that's that's a technique that I've been looking at and watching several different videos, but stay tuned. And last but not least, I wanted to share my, um, hmm, <laughs> busting my balls relapse. So my accountability partner, Tracy, we uh, had a chat and we thought, you know what? Um, is there an exception to the busting my balls challenge to only knit from our stash? And we came to the, uh, we're gonna call it a clause, the Canadian wool clause, that if we purchase any yarn outside of our um, weigh-in, that it had to be Canadian wool and traceable and extra points if you know where it was milled. So that happened. If you recall a few episodes back, my sister and I got to go to the Hutterite Colony in southern Alberta near Lethbridge and we, we purchased four fleeces from Rambouillet. And my brother-in-law and I, my sister couldn't come, she was working. We drove out to Rosebud River Mill and met the amazing Alex out there. And we got a tour of her mill and there was yarn there. And I may have purchased four skeins of pink elephant popcorn. I don't know if you have that in your country, but it's like Cracker Jacks, but it was the pink. And this is the color of it. Like you can even see um, the white coming through. It's 80% Targi lamb wool, 20% alpaca, two ply sport weight. There's 330 yards per skein. Um, it was processed in Rosebud River, uh, Rosebud, Alberta, and I, I had to have it. Please don't judge me. So we're calling that the, the Canadian yarn um, clause. The skeins of yarn that we're having our uh, Rambouillet spun, uh, three ply DK weight. And so we'll see how that turns out. I'm very, very excited about that. We'll be splitting it. Uh, my sister and I will be splitting that because. Uh, yeah, that's what we do. And that is everything I have to show you today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I, the sun's going down quite quickly and I have a 3.45 a.m. wake up call to head back to Calgary. And then I've got a couple days off and I'll be flying again uh, the following weekend. I, I hope you're well. Thank you so much for being here. And I really, really appreciate everyone's comments and engagement. I did want to mention a couple of podcasts that I've been enjoying. Uh, one recently came across my radar. It's quite new. Uh, it's a Canadian guy and his name, uh, the channel is Fairy Godfather Knits. Um, he's just amazing. He's, he's really talented and he's an author as well. And I've really enjoyed his, uh, his, his episodes so far. And another one, I don't know if I'm gonna say it correctly, but it's Frau Knits. And uh, she is uh, overseas, I believe it's Irish, and she does a lot of um, Celtic lore and she explains some of the traditions over there. And I just love it that her teenage son helps, helps her produce her episodes and is one of her biggest fans. So uh, yeah, please check out those channels and whatever you're up to, I hope 
that it's bringing you joy and that you're healthy and happy. And I will see you again soon on The Notice Do. Thank you.